Welcome back to Discussion-Based Teaching Explained, a channel dedicated to discussion-based classrooms on which I will explore how to teach and learn in a discussion-based environment. I'm Adam, I'm a teacher, and I've been developing a discussion-based teaching practice for 18 years now. And though it's very much still a work in progress, on this channel I hope to share some beliefs and practices that I've found successful over the years. Before we go on, let's review where we've been. In the first seven episodes of this channel, I focused on discussion philosophy. Then this video series has turned towards discussion skill building exercises. So in this episode, I'm gonna look at eight rad messages for day one of your discussion-based class. But before I jump into this list of eight rad messages, I wanna ask you, what do you want from your day one? And I don't mean what do you do on day one, I mean, what messages are you sending on day one? Are you being deliberate about what you're conveying on day one? Remember, day one is like no other day of the year. And so I think this is really important, and I wanted to lead with a couple of reflection questions here. What messages are you sending on day one? And maybe more importantly, are these the messages that you intend to be sending? I mean, at the end of the day, I think this comes down to intentionality. Are we intentionally trying to deliver messages through the things that we are having students do on that day one. I feel that as much as possible, day one should give the students a tiny taste of what they're going to be experiencing for the year in your discussion-based classroom. So now let's move on to my list of eight rad messages to deliver on day one. And these are things after years and years that I have found have been pretty successful at delivering the messages that I want to deliver. Message number one is, we're here to work. I wanted to start with some of the things I try not to do on day one. That is mainly review the syllabus or talk about the class. I mean, all of this stuff will happen, but none of it's really in line with the message that I want to deliver on day one, nor is it in line with that really important first impression that I want to give to students of the learning environment they're now in on day one. So just to be clear, they are not reading a syllabus on day one, and they are not doing things like talking about their summer. And by the way, I do think syllabi are important, and I do ask them to review the syllabus usually for homework on that day one, but not during that valuable day one class. So another message I like to deliver on day one is about challenging perspectives. In fact, the first thing I do on the first day of class, once the students have all been seated, is ask them to pick up their stuff, stand up, go to a different quadrant of the circle and sit next to two people that they're not currently sitting next to. And when they arrive in that new seat, I ask them to maintain that practice every day, sit in a different quadrant and do not sit next to the same two people on any successive days. And oh, by the way, I do the switch too. So quite simply, the immediate message delivered is I can't sit in the same spot every day, which by the way, they think is really weird. So maybe they're thinking about why they wanted to sit in the original spot and why they get wedded to where they get wedded. And the message is quite literally, this class will challenge your perspectives. It will challenge your perspectives intellectually and it'll even challenge your physical perspectives. And I get it, some of you may say, but Adam, I've got so much stuff. And I would say, yeah, I get it. It's not super convenient. It's not for them either, but I think we need to own that ethic if it's a message we really want to deliver. So let me add another reflection question here. What is the message that's delivered in your classroom in the first minute? Because at the risk of being over dramatic, that first minute might be the most important minute of the year. And I'm not saying you need to do the seat rotation thing that I do, but I am saying that it's important to be intentional about the message that that first minute and that that first day and the first week are sending. Another message that I'm sending is that your journal is your friend. Right after everyone has resat themselves, I hand out their journal. And the journals I use are these spiral bound, law ruled notebooks. I really like the division of the law ruled notebooks because it allows for more AAA discussion notes on the left side of the line and then still an ample space for journaling on the right side of the line. And by the way, if you like what you see from these pictures, make sure you get the law ruled notebooks. And it's really cool if all the students can have the exact same journals. I quickly announced that these are their journals that only work from this class can go into these journals. 
that they can write their names immediately on the cover. And I even bring some Sharpies for them to do this right then and there. And maybe most importantly, I announced that I will not be reading their journals, that it's a place just for their writing. And by the way, I'll go more into writing in a future series of episodes. And I also mentioned that in class, we will frequently be writing in these journals and we will rarely be using computers. So getting the journal is the action, but the message is that this journal is going to be a really important, pivotal part of their experience in this class. And unsurprisingly, we use them immediately, right then and there, which leads to another message. In this class, you're going to read, think, write, and discuss over and over, and we're gonna start with some reading. For me, this series of read, think, write, discuss is a pivotal construct of a discussion-based classroom. And as such, I want them to experience it, or at least a small sample of it, on day one. So once they've moved seats and gotten their journals, I hand out a document. It's usually a short document or a paragraph or some type of excerpt that can be read in five minutes or less. It doesn't necessarily need to be related to the first stuff you're going to be covering in your class. Think of it as like pre-class days or pre-knowledge. I will say, though, that it is nice if that source that you're entertaining on the first day itself has a bigger message about the kind of work and thinking you're going to be doing over the year. So for example, when I was teaching AP US history, I would choose a pretty challenging quotation from Abraham Lincoln in which it becomes very apparent that he was a racist, even though he was also advocating for slaves to be freed. When I was teaching biology, it might be a quotation questioning when death actually occurs and the existence of a, the soul. In other words, pieces that are short, tough, and challenging. And the message really is get ready to think in here. So another message that I immediately deliver is we always write. And hence, in response to this source, I ask the students to enter their journal, to title the first page of their journal with the author's name and respond to this piece in what I call a focused free write. And the prompt I like to start with is, what are your first thoughts? I call these types of writing focused free writes because they are focused on the source, but they also offer some freedom. And also the prompt first thoughts implies that there might be second or third or fourth thoughts. They don't feel the pressure of having like fully formulated ideas yet. So once I've given them about five minutes to consider the source, I usually give them three to five minutes for this focus free write. I tell them when, when they're about halfway through. And when the time is up, I usually say, okay, come to a comfortable stop. So I wait patiently for 10, 20, 30 seconds for the writing to cease. And I will noticeably wait until the last writer is done. And immediately the message becomes that this writing is valued, that I'm not going to react negatively if they don't end exactly on time. And once they're done with their writing, what I usually ask them to do is read over what they wrote and at the very bottom, put a single word that they think encapsulates their first thought. So now that we've started day one by reading and thinking and writing, we're gonna move on and have a brief discussion. But before we do that, I deliver one more important day one message. We will bounce the eyes. So. We are going to proceed into a circle of voices discussion. Now I'm going to explain to them what that is. But before we commence our circle of voices discussion, I ask them, in addition to getting prepared to share their contribution, to do two other things. One, I ask them to take triple A notes, especially on that first day of the affirm kind. And the second thing I ask them to do is to be aware of their eyes. And I'm very transparent with them that if I feel like they are staring me down, I will deliberately look away, not to be rude, but to deliver the message that I would like them to look at everyone. And if I look back at them and I still feel like I'm getting stared down, I'll deploy this hand signal, which basically means bounce the eyes. And by the way, it will take a long time to break down their habit of just wanting to talk to you. And once the circle of voices begins, there's another message being delivered. We will listen to each other. I also explain AAAs and how important it is 
that they're going to be asked to focus in on what their teammates are saying and actually find something to affirm and eventually to add to and eventually to ask about. So as I explained in the AAA episode, what they're going to do in that left column to the left of the red line, if they hear something that resonated with them, they're gonna write just a little exclamation mark and their teammate's name and a little shorthand notation to remind them of what they heard and what they were, how they responded to it. So by the end of that circle of voices, they might have at least one, but maybe two, three, four, or five different ideas. The triple A's reinforce the idea that they are actually talking for each other too. Because while a student sitting there taking a triple A note, they're thinking, I'm listening to my teammate over there. That means other people are listening to me, not just Adam. And the final message that's being delivered on that first day of class is that we will partake as a team in skill building exercises and we will commit to evolving as discussants. And as I've said, the circle of voices is our first exercise on that first day. As I told you last time in episode number 10, I'm going to begin every day with a third of the class for a third of the year being devoted to skill building exercises for discussants. So even on that first day, in that first circle of voices, depending on time and student numbers, I ask every student to share their word that encapsulates their writing and maybe some ideas about what led them to that word. The messages here are that everyone will have a voice, that every voice matters, and that every voice will be attended to. And an ancillary benefit here is that I am immediately getting to know them as discussants. I'm looking for signs of how they handle themselves in a discussion, who speaks with ease, who is more reticent, who refers back naturally to things they've heard previously. And by the way, it will come as no surprise to you that I too partake in the circle of voices and that I never lead. About halfway through the circle of voices, I'll remind students about the AAA responsibility that I ask them. And I'll also ask them to say their name before they speak or maybe even have name tags for my benefit and depending on what school you're in, this might be helpful for everyone. And once the circle of voices ends, sometimes I'll have a second round of circle of voices based on the triple A's that they took. Or depending on time, sometimes I might just let the discussion go live immediately. And I'll tell you, it's a super empowering feeling on that first day for students to have their voice, to have it heard. And even in a triple A session, which follows the circle of voices, to have their name acknowledged by a teammate that they may or may not know. This is powerful stuff and it's starting on day one. So that's about it, the eight messages I'm trying to deliver on day one. And you may be thinking, Adam, isn't that kind of a lot? I mean, it's only day one. And I have two responses to that. The first is, no, you can do it, go for it. That's about an hour. It's tight, but it can be done. My second response is that, well, yes, I think it can be done, it's gotta be a good fit for you. And it might not be, and, and that's okay. But I would say most importantly, that as long as what you do on day one is intentional, and it's delivering the messages that you want to deliver on day one, go for it. For me, I have found over the years that delivering these messages on day one really gets the class started in a way that I find really productive and healthy. And I think this is a really important reflection question for all of us. What would you think of your class after day one? And obviously the implication there is, what would a student think of your class on day one? And is that kind of in line with what you hope they think? So over the next few episodes, I'm gonna look at more skill building exercises, which will kind of kick in after day one. So again, thanks for tuning in. I'm Adam. If you have any questions or comments or concerns, please email me at discussionbasedteaching at gmail.com. And thanks for watching.